We begin with breaking news from Paris, where President Macron's government has narrowly survived two votes of no confidence in Parliament days after he pushed through a controversial pension reform. Opposition politicians were angry. Macron bypassed Parliament to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64. Now, for the motions to have passed, parties from across the deeply divided National Assembly would have had to unite, which they haven't done. Let's go live to Paris. Natasha Butler is there for us. So the government has survived. What does this mean, Natasha, now? Well, clearly it's good news for the French government surviving these no-confidence votes that were tabled by some opposition groups in Parliament, angry over the government's pension reform bill and the fact the government pushed that reform bill through the Parliament by decree, therefore bypassing Parliament. Lawmakers said that was unjust, unfair, undemocratic. That is why they tabled these no-confidence votes. But the government has survived, and what happens now is that it can continue its work with this uh, pension reform bill. It will now go to the Constitutional Court and it could be signed off into law in the coming days and weeks. But the political crisis is obviously far from over because the government survived these votes only by a very, very narrow margin. And what it means is in the coming uh, months, the government's really going to have to try and find ways to work with Parliament. It doesn't have a majority in the Parliament. It needs to work with MPs. Uh, from opposition groups, but what we've seen is op opposition groups accusing the government of being politically weak, a political failure, so it's going to be a very rocky road ahead uh, for Macron's government. So the political crisis is not over, Natasha, and it's likely that the protests and strikes are also not over. Yes, they're certainly not uh, over by any means because demonstrators say they want to continue with their protest because their strategy is that even though this bill has been pushed through Parliament and is going to be on its way to become a law soon, they believe that by upping the pressure in the street, um, increasing the pressure on the government, they can try and persuade the government to scrap this uh, pension reform bill that they say is unfair, they say it's going to be particularly difficult and have an impact on poor workers, on women, they don't want to work uh, more years. They don't want to be forced to contribute longer to the pension system. The government said all along, though, that that is necessary in order to make the France's complex pension system more sustainable uh, for future generations. But what we're going to see uh, next Thursday is a nationwide uh, strike and protest that's been called for by trade unions, and we're continuing to see protests. We've seen them nearly every day in the past few days. There have been pockets of violence, some unrest, some peaceful process, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration among some people who feel that the French government is out of touch with the concerns of ordinary people, is ignoring their concerns, and there's very much a sort of feeling in the air that there was a few years ago with the Yellow Vest movement, that sense of social unrest and social unease and frustration with the government. Let's, uh, thank you very much, Natasha. Natasha Butler, live there in Paris. Let's now discuss this further with French historian Francois Gere, who's also the founding president of the French Strategic An Analysis Institute, his life from Paris. Francois, very good to have you with us. Uh, so the government has survived the, the no-confidence motions. What is your reaction first? Were you expecting this outcome? You know, it's to some extent, the beginning of uh, a new form of political crisis. Um, today, we have the combination of street demonstrations, more and more frequent, of strikes which hurt more and more the economy of the country, and at the same time, we see that the government cannot rely upon a strong political majority. Therefore, a deep, serious crisis is already opened, and we will see some new elements of this crisis in the coming hours in the coming days, because, for instance, from uh, my own residence in Paris, 
I can hear demonstrations very near. I can hear police forces alarms. And we are in front of a very, very dangerous social and political crisis. Okay, so we understand, just to clarify for our viewers who are just joining us, there were two uh, no-confidence motions against the government. One motion has failed so far, the other one has not passed yet. How much does this weaken President Macron, Francois? Well, uh, we, we, we think that the second motion uh, will have uh, a very... A small number of votes uh, because it is supported only by uh, right and far right groups. It's not the the, the real important issue. Mm. The important issue is that uh, Mrs. Born government is no longer credible. Right. There is a crisis of legitimacy, and uh, President Macron will have to address this situation. How will he address hope, it, in your opinion? Course, Elizabeth Bourne, for our viewers, of course, is a French prime minister. How do you expect the president to address well, this it, crisis? It, Are we going to see the government resign, despite passing, uh, despite surviving the, the no-confidence vote? Well, it's almost obvious that uh, Macron will have to change prime minister. And uh, it will put the burden of the political failure upon uh, Mrs. Baum. It's a, a very classical move. Okay. Uh, is it enough? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, the president now is directly in front of the people, mm. in front of a crisis. Can the pressure, I mean, you've mentioned that there were protests already just outside your window. Do you think can the pressure from the streets and strikes and demonstrations that the French have promised to continue, can that force Macron into reconsidering his stance over this reform? Well, my sense is that uh, he will have to um, ask a new government to reconsider the political framework as a whole. That means, for instance, have a referendum vote on the issue of um, retirements, and uh, it will have to, uh, to some extent, transfer part of its power to the parliament and to reconsider the political balance okay. uh, in France today. OK. Thank you so much. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much for talking to us. François Gère, French historian, joining us there live from Paris. We appreciate it.